Let's power it up. We are live with the community, and this is the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Development bi-weekly call. This is our last call in October, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Time flies when Todd is around, isn't it? That's what everybody says, because we're having so much fun. Well, we have a wonderful call in store for you all as our last one for October. We're going to get the latest updates on the community. We're going to talk about some PNP.NET library updates, PNP PowerShell. We're going to see the latest on script samples, Copilot Pro Dev samples, Power Platform samples, so many samples. And then, of course, everyone's favorite favorite time. What time is that? It is picture time. So get those fantastic faces ready. And of course, why are we all here for our three amazing presenters of the day? So we're going to kick it off with Doug, who's going to talk about MS Graph Assistance with Ant Runner, uh, And then Joseph's going to take it over talking about empowering education and how to create interactive learning bots with Copilot Studio. And Tomish is going to be here to talk about integration with Graph and SharePoint API using application permissions in Logic Apps. So lots of awesome stuff to talk about today. But first, for all those that may be new to the calls, welcome. We love that you're here welcome we want you to be here and we've got some resources that are available to you they are all absolutely free let's kick it off with things like our microsoft community learning videos that's in our youtube channel uh, it has new videos almost every single day it's where calls like this get put the demos get put other amazing things from the community and microsoft are showcased there so definitely head on over and subscribe today smash that subscribe button as the uh, kids say then we've got our linkedin group for discussions. Uh, that's where you can collaborate with other members of the community in the wonderful LinkedIn platform that is growing. We've got our open source tooling. We've got our sample galleries, so team samples, SPFX samples, Power Platform samples, list formatting samples, all those samples. There's no horsing around, <laughs> but we've got everything available there for you. And again, it's all free. All you got to do, remember one URL, ak.ms slash community slash home will take you and give you access to all that goodness. Now, if you're also here, uh, we hope that you'll be willing to join other community calls. And we've got lots for you. We've got our Microsoft Speakers Call, which happens on Tuesdays. That is coming directly from the horse's mouth. That is uh, that program manager pl uh, uh, uh huh, uh huh. If I could speak, I'd say program managers and uh, product managers all sharing the goodness of that's going on within Microsoft. It is Microsoft Speakers. So again, you're getting it directly from the mothership. We've then got our community calls, which are hosted by the community and uh, demoed and presented by the community. So our Power Platform is monthly. That happens the third Wednesday of every month. We've got our office add-ins. And then, of course, our bi-weekly sibling calls, one of which you are in now, the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community. And we've got our VV Connections and SharePoint framework. That happens every Thursday, 7 a.m. Pacific time, uh, depending on time and daylight savings, which is happening in the next couple of weeks, everybody. So be in be mindful that those times may shift over the next couple of weeks, depending on your invite. Uh, but that just happens as the world catches up with daylight savings time. So just be aware of that. But again, every Thursday, we're here for you. No matter holidays, no matter what's going on in the world, we are going to be here. Get access to the invites at ak.ms slash community slash calls, uh, and you can make sure that you're alerted to all these. And these are wonderful opportunities. I call them the crystal ball into what's now, what's new, what's next, because we're seeing what everybody in the world is doing and how they're using the technology that we know and love each and every day. And as a preview for us on next Tuesday's call, uh, we're going to see a trio of amazing presenters from our program managers and product managers. So Satya and Anshul are going to be here with, again, this AI zero to one story, building an AI fied company communicator author app experience using Azure Open AI. Whew, that's a lot of A's in there. And Steve's going to be here talking about building SharePoint Embedded Center of Excellence Solution to Power Platform. Very, very cool. And Bob, the builder, is going to be back talking about a hands-on lab building declarative agents with API plugins. So that's a series as well that you do not want to miss. Again, 29th of October, 8 a.m. That is on Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Now, as you're watching, you may think, you know, these are some really cool things that everybody's showing off. And I think I've got some cool things to share. I guarantee you do. And we want to see it. So if you would like to present on these calls, don't overthink it. Don't think you have to show how time travel is possible or some epic save the world kind of thing. Everybody starts from somewhere and that's the beginning. So if you're showing off level zero or level 100 feature and functionality, that's perfect. We want to see you do it. So fill out this form, ak.ms slash community slash quest slash demo. We'll get back to you. Submit it. We'll even buddy up with you if you want uh, a buddy. If it's your first time, no problem. We will support you and make sure that you're going to be a complete success. So fill that in.
And of course, as we are getting involved in the community and we ask you to contribute, you may say, how do I contribute? Those samples are cool. Can I contribute a sample? Yes, we absolutely welcome it. And we understand, though, that it might be hard to know how to do that because GitHub can be confusing. Well, Sharing is Caring is here to save the day. Doo -doo -doo -doo. That was a fake sound effect, by the way. Yeah, so it is here to save the day. We've got our sessions. They are live. They are safe space. We join Teams calls together. We walk through the process of submitting an actual contribution to GitHub using a pull request uh, and forking and all that good stuff that you may not even know what that means. But guess what? After the call, you're going to. And it's a complete contribution, which means that it counts for you in terms of the community. So we ask you to please sign up. Uh, we're going to be scheduling that next one for November. Uh, Hugo and I are going to be up in Minnesota this weekend at the workshop days. So as soon as that is over, we will get that scheduled for everybody uh, as we know what our schedules are looking like. So take a look at ak.ms slash sharing is caring, and we'll get the next one scheduled. Again, safe space, absolutely free, and we work together. And then, of course, once you do contribute, we absolutely absolutely want to recognize you for the amazing stuff that you're doing in the community. That's where our recognition program comes in. Uh, this is absolutely free. It's powered by Credly. You've probably been seeing some of those Hacktoberfest badges, and there's still time left in October to get those. So go opt in, aka.ms slash community slash recognition. Again, 100% free. We cover the cost. Credly badges cost money, but we cover it for you. So there's Promptober right now for those prompt uh, repos, Hacktoberfest for any repo. We've got our Refresh Rangers. And those are going to go from repo to repo as months go by. Plenty of opportunity. We've got the season of getting coming up next month in December. Slice the samples, all kinds of opportunity to get involved. So please opt in. It is 100% free, and we love you for what you're doing and want to recognize you. All right, now let's move over to our project-specific updates, and we will start with Bert, who uh, is here but needs to be promoted. So I will do that now. Uh, actually, you know what? We're going to start with Copilot prompts as we get everybody promoted. I forgot about that. So we've got our Copilot prompts. Uh, these, again, are the Copilot as well as Power Platform prompts. Uh, so we absolutely want to make sure that uh, you realize that there are these prompt opportunities to get involved. It's an easy way to get involved, much like the script samples. And you can check that out at aka.ms slash PNP prompt library. And the prompt of the week is coming from Peter Paul. Sort emails by priority with top priority given replies to messages I previously previously sent. Grouped emails, and again, I'm not going to read it all verbatim, but you can see how you can get very detailed with your prompts around things like newsletters so that you can kind of see what's important, what do I need to reply to, and all that kind of stuff. So very, very cool, Peter Paul. Thank you so, so much. Now let's move over to Bert and talk about PNP.NET libraries. Yes, thank you, David. Uh, so, pnp.net, a couple of minor updates, I would say, for this period. Um, so, uh, Gotham, uh, who is coming next to PowerShell, did work to update our .NET dependencies. So, there were some kind of security-related uh, issues, which were fixed in your uh, .NET framework uh, assemblies. And so, we're all up to date now, uh, both framework and core and PowerShell as well. So, thanks for that, Gotham. And the last thing there was like a small change in the when you load the SharePoint user, you, there were some issues with loading additional properties. That's all fixed now. So overall, things running smooth there. Um, that's it from my side. Let's move to uh, PowerShell then. Thank you all, guys. Awesome. Thanks, Bert. Got him. Take it on over. Thanks. Thanks, Bart. Thanks, David. Uh, yep, in PHP PowerShell as well, uh, version 3.0 is coming very soonish. Uh, we have been working hard on getting uh, these dependencies updated as much as possible. So there has been a bunch of security updates, primarily in the .NET 8 side of the things. So would I, I would highly recommend you download the latest builds from PHP PowerShell, the, the nightly builds as such. Uh, besides that, uh, we've updated a documentation. Uh, we added a bunch of commands related to external items, so you can use all these new goodness coming from the Microsoft Graph Connector side of the things. Uh, we added a command to uh, delete, uh, to get the flows which have been deleted by the users. Uh, what else? Uh, we fixed a term commandlet, so it was not respecting the parent term commands as well. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, work is going on uh, with 3.0, so we do plan to release it soon, around uh, the time when .NET 6 goes out of support sometime in November. Uh, as that, feel free to reach out to us on uh, GitHub or Discord. Would love to absolutely hear from you. Thank you. Over to you, David. Excellent. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Adam. All right. Another great opportunity, an easy opportunity to get involved in the community. Paul Bullock, tell me more. 
Yeah, thank you, David. So Script Samples is a repository where you can contribute your PowerShell scripts to the community. Um, so we have nearly 295 scenarios with 403 scripts, which is super cool, covering things like the Microsoft Graph, PMP PowerShell, CLI for M365, and many, many more. And all these are integrated for visibility into the uh, Microsoft Solution sample galleries, uh, which has got hundreds, sorry, thousands of samples on there now. Woohoo! And we've also got the PMP uh, Visual Studio code extensions by Adam Wojcik. So if you've got that extension installed, these samples will surface there too, which is super, super cool. So we've got some spooky, scary, awesome samples. So some great new samples from the community. We've got two from Dan Toft for generating file count reports and list ownerless teams, which is super cool. And then we've got two new ones from Daniel Cavin, if I pronounce that name correctly, probably not. Sorry, I apologize in advance. Uh, which is bootstrap all icons to use in your PowerShell apps and get tenant ID. Um, I know there's a pending PR uh, so uh, from Reshmi coming soon, so uh, uh, I will I will get to process that uh, uh, sh shortly. But if you need any help with the, you know, with if you've got some scripts you want to contribute, you're not really sure what to do, you know, feel free to reach out or. or post an issue you know i don't, I don't bite <laughs> so um well unless it's like halloween then i might bite uh, and then um uh i can help support you support you there um again hacktoberfest is currently running so your contributions will, will will count towards that which is super super cool and that's a badge so thank you very much you're absolutely awesome um uh, back to you david Awesome, thank you. I feel like I missed the boat when you said scary, spooky, so I gotta, I gotta get that added in now, right? So, uh, excellent. <laughs> very good, very good. All right, <laughs> let's move over to our <laughs> favorite builder. That's Bob the Builder about Copilot Pro to have samples. Hey, uh, this is really exciting. Look at all the samples we got last week. So this is a new repo, if you're not aware. This is for <clears throat> people who like to code and people who like Copilot. So if you're a VS Code or Visual Studio programmer and you build declarative agents, Copilot plugins, or and or custom engine agents, we would love to have you contribute to these. And I have a feeling these are all declarative agents. We got seven new ones this week, and I think they're they're so easy. Sometimes it's just instructions. Just you know, put them in there. I, I want to see us catch up with some of the of the other big repos in terms of the number of new submissions please please so <clears throat> rabia excuse me made an environmental sustainability agent which uses sharepoint documents and instructions eric Scherlinger did and kind of outdid himself with the career coach the idea coach the learning coach the prompt coach and the writing coach because, hey, uh, you can't have too much coaching, and it's really cool to get all these ideas. And finally, uh, Cristiano Goncalves and Luis Demetrio, sorry if I mispronounced your names, from Sao Paulo, where we kicked off the, um, recently kicked off the Copilot Developer Camp. They have a really cool one. On, called Snow Wizard, which is ServiceNow integration. So go check it out. I didn't make links to all of them because there's just too many. So aka.ms slash copilot dash pro dash dev dash samples. Thank you. And back to you, David. Excellent. Very cool. And uh, thank you, Rabia, Eric, uh, Cristano, and Lewis. Excellent, excellent stuff. Very, very cool. All right. Last but not least, let's give it over to Kate in Power Platform Samples. Yeah, hello everybody, and uh, thank you, David. So yeah, today we have a super cool new sample from uh, Glenn Pearson. Uh, this is a small but powerful solution that replaced the created by a user from your SharePoint list items, useful for projects where items are creating via, for instance, uh, Power of the Met Flows and has a service account in the created by field. Thank you so much, Glenn, for sharing. And uh, so all samples in the Power Platform Sample Solutions Gallery are completely free and unmanaged, and they are waiting for you to give them a try. And also, I encourage everybody to share your own samples. We would like to see your own work. If you would like to know more how to do this, just follow the link that you see on the slide or reach out to me. I will be very happy to guide you. Or you can join sharing this current session, so a lot of ways. And let's, go, uh, let's grow together. Thank you. Back to you, David. Awesome, Kate. I love I love how you put that. They're waiting for you. So everybody, don't let them down. The samples want to see you. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> what time is it? It is picture time. So let's turn those cameras on. We are just about on time. So we'll make this somewhat efficient. And get those cameras. See, Vess is there. Doug's there. Stephanie's there. Todd is already there. Looking good. I see Tomish. Excellent. Great to see everybody. It's growing, Kate. Woo. All right. Let's 
get this ready to go with Camtasia, which is clickety, clickety, clackety. There we go. Move that over. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Still a little bit of room if everybody wants to get in there. All right. Give it just another couple of seconds. We're growing. All right. Excellent, excellent. All right. Oh, we shrunk a little bit. No. Okay. Let's kick off the timer. Three, two, one. All right. Wave, everybody. Show. Todd went very small to very big all of a sudden. He's like... Oompa Loompa to giant. All right. Looks great. Love seeing all the smiling faces. Thank you all for being amazing and what you do each and every day. All right. Cool. Now, let's get back to our regularly scheduled program where we are going to welcome our three amazing presenters of the day. We're going to kick it off with Doug, who's going to talk about MS Graph Assistance with Ant Runner. So, Doug, feel free if you'd like to take on over the screen. I have taken over the screen. Can you see it? You have. Yes, affirmative. I can see it. All right, fantastic. So uh, I changed this out a little bit, but we are going to talk about MS Graph a little bit. Uh, Ant Runner is a big uh, open source offering uh, that I put out a, less than a month ago that's still not quite 1.0. Um, and so there's a lot to talk about. All right, so I'm a, a guy who's been around for a long time, and I love M365. I'm currently in Azure AI. Uh, MD, MVP and M365 Dev MVP, uh, and I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so you can try this out yourself. This is a demo, not a product, uh, this email address. If you send it a question, uh, wait a little while, you'll get an answer. This is uh, very much a demo, so if you all send it an email at the same time, uh, some of you will find bugs for me, and I would appreciate that. Uh, but uh, you could think of this as like uh, maybe like perplexity AI. Here's an example of sort of the output that you get from it. Uh, this thing will do a big swarm uh, and maybe run uh, literally dozens and scrape, uh, you know, maybe a hundred different web pages to find the answer to your question and come back with an answer that uh, hopefully has, uh, you know, actual correct information from real web pages, unlike certain search engines uh, that I could talk about. Uh, I won't be able to tell if it crashed because it's just an email inbox with a project, uh, you know, running, but uh, we can look at it later. Um, so um, I want to talk about why I built Ant Runner and what it does. I'm not going to read this slide to you, uh, but these are just a few of the common uh, reasons AI projects fail. I do a lot of consulting work. I talk to a lot of people. Um, and... Uh, uh, often it comes down to being shooting for the moon, not taking uh, opportunities to build small AIs, and uh, not having good data quality. And so the name Ant Runner um, and Ants is part of a philosophy, which is um, that you should try to build small, componentized individual AI applications. And so we're going to look at a couple of those today with Ant Runner, and at the end we'll see uh, one of them running as a, a service backing a declarative uh, copilot extension uh, for, for Bob and my uh, friends uh, in that space. So um, strategies to address these failures, just to say this really simply, um, be small, uh, try to avoid major investments in giant uh, platforms and be aware that you're working in a, a space that changes uh, really fast seismically. Uh, if you are looking at any code from like a year ago or two years ago, design um, in this space and you consider it uh, against the state of the art capabilities that we have now in APIs, a lot of the design is gonna look wrong. Um, and it's not that it, their design was wrong, it's that the six months after they started, new options became available for them. Um, so Ant Runner uses the Assistance API. And the Assistance API is uh, OpenAI's uh, basis for the GPT's features in uh, ChatGPT. Uh, they came out in preview in Azure uh, in February and were refreshed in uh, uh, late May. And so when I say uh, the space is changing quickly. This is an example of it. A lot of the frameworks, in fact, most of the frameworks that you'll look at use uh, older APIs like completions and chat, where you sort of have to do everything. And Assistance API wraps all up the wraps all the stuff up for you um, and gives you 
threading uh, with automatic token management that you would have to write yourself if you were using completions. Vector file search, uh, where you can upload files and search them, which where you would need on your data or an AI search and other stuff maybe that you provision for your RAG solution. Uh, they bring Code Interpreter, uh, which lets you run Python, create and upload and download files, which is amazingly useful. Um, and you would have to, uh, to build that yourself, you would have to use something like E2E and a, a, a Kubernetes solution with lots of stuff to be able to handle Python sessions and so on and so forth. And then uh, native support for uh, tool calling. And I probably left a couple of things off that it, that it also does. But, you know, it's like a black box API that can do everything that a single um, AI assistant or agent might need to be able to do. Um, and the tools, uh, the tool calling makes a big difference where an LLM is concerned. So this slide shows um, a conversation with a famous prompt, which is how many R's are there in the word strawberry? When OpenAI came out with their O1 uh, reasoning models that take longer to think, they, this is one of the examples that they use that it could answer this question. If you have code though, and you have tools, you don't have to worry about the LLM trying to figure out how many letters there are in a word based on gluing tokens together. It's not good at it, and that's why they use that as an example of uh, something that O1 does better. But if you use a code interpreter with Python, when you ask it how many R's there are in the word strawberry, it'll turn that into a string and count the letter R's in it and give you an answer back. Um, if this was a math problem or a database query or anything uh, uh, complicated, we don't want the LLM to to do that and have to and try to train it. Uh, we need, yeah, it's like a private proxy for Google results. Yeah, and use the heck out of it. I really am trying to test. Um, thank you. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's what tools can do for you. If the, if the answer came from the database um, and it matches the database, then you can know that the AI didn't hallucinate. In the case of the mail bot that you're using, one of the things that it does is it verifies that the links um, are actually good. Um, now, unfortunately for uh, people that want to use the, uh, the assistance API, uh, you get all this black box stuff, but the API itself is complicated, and it's much more complicated than uh, the chat API. And if you go into AI Studio, and you go into the Assistance Playground and start playing with it, one thing you'll notice that unlike the chat uh, playground and the Completions Playground, there's no deploy button here. It, you can't, uh, in this playground, go from an AI to a, a website uh, that has something in it. And it also doesn't have support for um, actually invoking uh, the tools. And this is a sort of a subject for a longer day, what I'm talking about. I only have a few minutes here. Uh, but I do want to show you uh, what you get when you start using threads. So this is um, a, a, our product. And uh, I'm using multiple tools here. The first one starts off with the mail ants. And I ask it to find uh, this is output from that email system that maybe some of you are trying right now. And so um, it found that email. And it gave me the plan. It used the, uh, an M365 graph uh, call to find the messages uh, using OAuth. And uh, then it read me the email with lovely uh, pictures in it. And then I switched to a different tool, which are the drive ants, and I found a little bug here. But at the end of it, uh, it created a Word document, uh, which it uploaded to OneDrive for me. Um, and so what this shows, and this is a little different from what you'll see in the Copilot experience, is this ability to um, use multiple dedicated assistance in a conversation uh, together where you as the user uh, are steering them to get the right kind of tool. So that when you say, I'm looking for a message, you're in the context of mail, it's going to look for a mail message versus you're in the context of Teams chat, it's going to look for a chat message. Um, so that's what a thread is all about. And that's the benefit um, of the assistance API is the ability to use all sorts of different tools. So back over to the uh, uh, to the slides here, right? So um, it's really powerful facility. Uh, it does lots of stuff. The API itself is a little is a lot harder to use than uh, uh, some other uh, older things that, you know, on the flip side, require you to spin up all your own infrastructure. So the idea here is to be able to build these quickly, to iterate quickly, and have them be small. Um, and so we need tools to do that uh, because the the playground and the other tools don't do that. And so that's where Ant Runner comes into the picture. Uh, Ant Runner is a play on the word assistant, um, along with uh, 
uh, some older th- uh, computer science uh, stuff called the actor model and an expression, one ant is no ants, which uh, means that in parallel processes, uh, we need um, lots of individual things to work together collaboratively to be able to do work. So lots of ants, they swarm in the case of the, the search uh, about there. You can get to this, and we'll uh, make sure this is in the in uh, the uh, show notes uh, as uh, Douglas Ware Ant Runner. And Ant Runner consists of uh, the ability to define prompts, uh, your files for code interpreter and vector search, the tools using open API specs, the model and the parameters, um, and it can create uh, and deploy those for you across environments. It runs the threads, um, and the end, at the end of the day, the idea is to componentize your AI as small independent things, and so as you add onto your system, you're just adding in new components, not having to retest everything that you've done before. And it also lets you preserve all of your um, definition of what your AI actually is, which is the prompt and the files and the tools and the model parameters, which are independent of um, the assistance API or chat GPT or GPT, maybe, you know, so once you've got all your business knowledge and your tools to be able to do something, maybe six months from now, there's a new model from a different vendor you want to switch to all the things that you needed in, in this or the things that would carry over and this puts them in a nice box. Okay, so to get started uh, with this, uh, you can go to the repo. There are Jupyter Polyglot notebooks uh, in C Sharp. There's a PowerShell module. There's a durable and synchronous Azure Functions uh, library, and there's an Ant Runner lib NuGet package. Um, uh, to explain all this uh, is going to take me the whole next year, and I'm continuously adding content um, over here. Um, so the notebooks. Uh, There are nine of them, uh, and I'm adding new ones. Let's look at actually uh, one of them in real life. So we're going to look at the uh, CatFax notebook and uh, the CatFax assistant. So um, in the notebooks, we have all the different assistant definitions, all the ants that are used by the different notebooks. And so CatFax consists of these instructions. You use a tool to get facts about cats. And it here's the manifest, which uh, the instructions get glued into and the title and what you want the model to be. Uh, and then there is an, uh, an expression for the open API schema. Now, this one is using um, a, a service that is out there for testing on the web that always returns the same results and has no auth. Um, but when I run this, um, the first thing is I download the package. Um, then I run the settings or instructions about how to set yourself up, which I'm adding to. Um, and so we'll just run this whole notebook and, um, it's first spitting out. These are the ones I have. It didn't find cat facts. So it shows that it's going to create it. And here's the files that are involved in creating it. Uh, it made sure it, uh, existed and then it ran it. And, uh, this was the prompt, create a prompt, uh, plan to tell me something about fat cats. Uh, it, created the plan, it called the API, here's the response, uh, which you can see nicely as the uh, last message. You can also uh, download annotations and files. For in this case, I asked it to make a file for me. Uh, and so it ran it ran uh, the tool to call the service, when then it used Python to create a file, which it uh, is catfast.txt, which it downloaded uh, here for me to use. And there, um, Several, like I said, there's a whole bunch of samples in here. Some of these you may not be able to run unless you have good quotas. Um, these, especially these last two, uh, can uh, with certain prompts consume say a hundred thousand or more tokens. Um, this is uh, an example of the web search one, which I'm going to talk about um, next uh, for the uh, uh, the last piece, which is the 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 copilot um, declarative agent. So this assistant, web search with API key, um, is uh, defined here, and it has uh, these instructions, and it has uh, this uh, open API schema to Bing. I had to provision a Bing uh, search instance in Azure to do this, um, and it has a manifest. And so when this one runs, uh, the Ant Runner, uh, based on the environment configuration, will put the right uh, key in it, and I'll uh, get a result back. Um, and so these are things that I can do uh, uh, this weekend uh, that I just uh, ran, and these are all links to real things. Another one I'll show you um, uh, that I'll refer you to is the uh, MS Graph user profile info one. Um, this one uh, uses the uh, OData helper, and uh, when I run this, um, it's going to uh, run the 
what is my name prompt? And it says my name is Doug Ware. And it did this by calling uh, this open API spec or this uh, graph call to get my user profile. And again, in this repo, uh, as I build these samples out, I'm gonna write articles and lots more, more setup. It's pretty active um, and I'm pretty happy about it. Now, once you have one of these defined, uh, you can use it uh, uh, you know, with the library, with Azure Functions. And so um, this is an example of uh, a function that calls uh, the search ant assistance using the ant runner. Um, and it, this has gotten the uh, markdown instructions from the query. This is this is the whole function. It's uh, what seventy lines long. There's an HTTP trigger uh, which reads the question uh, from the body and then calls the search method, which runs the assistant using Ant Runner's run thread, um, and uh, then it spits the results out um, inside of uh, the. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, pardon me while I navigate. Um, inside of uh, this guy here, this is uh, this is the Ant Army website. Um, when I run this, um, no, oh. what is there to do today? This is a cut down version. This just does the web search, not all the stuff that that email uh, bot is doing uh, because the email bot takes over a minute to run and it'll time out if you try to use it um, in Copilot. Uh, if I take the same prompt, right? And so this ran the crawl. Um, here's my results, which I got back and it's uh, spitting out the answer. If I come over to Copilot, um, here's there's a declarative uh, uh, Copilot um, extension, which is using the uh, uh, local tunnel to that function app that I just showed you. And uh, if I start a new chat and I say, what is the news today in Atlanta, Georgia, or uh, we'll paste this in to get the uh, same sort of search. Uh, then uh, Teams calls my function uh, as a plugin um, and it goes into that thing. So I can take that AI Ant, that application that I built, and I can use it um, in any uh, system that I want, whether it's a Copilot agent, a custom fancy user interface chatbot, um, an email, unattended email attendant, um, and um, this is how uh, we build, test, version, manage, like really core to our workflow. So I hope that you'll try out Ant Runner and try out the notebooks. Um, please uh, click star on the uh, on the repo, send me emails, um, and just open up a dialog. Uh, my, my hope is that the community is going to get a lot of value out of this, and I'm also hoping that uh, when the November trade shows start to happen, that OpenAI and Microsoft don't... Uh, <laughs> uh, completely uh, change everything by by introducing a new API surface that's more appealing. But uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Doug, very, very cool stuff. Really appreciate it. Love the thought and ingenuity and imagination that you put into all this. So I'm sure that the community is going to love it and hopefully everyone collaborates with it. Very, very cool. Okay. In the interest of time, we'll move on. We got two more demos. Uh, want to welcome Joseph to the call on Empower Education, Create Interactive Learning Bots with Copilot Studio. So Joseph, you want to take on over the share? Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Sound good. Go ahead and share your screen. Okay. Um, sorry, everyone, I have not shared my video. Um, seems I've been acting up the, a bit lately. So yeah, t welcome everyone to my session and super thanks to the M365 and Power Platform community for having me here today. So my demo session is actually a very, very simple session, which I which I decided to come up with because it helped me to solve a problem which I believe others may have um, similar problems in, in that regard. So, so yeah, so my name is, Without wasting much time, this is the agenda. I'm going to go through an introduction, understanding Copilot Studio, talk a bit about the power of AI, then go fully into the demo. And um, and yeah, th that's where we're going to stop. So here is my profile. Um, I'm Joseph Fadero. To sum, to sum down my profile a bit, I will say I'm a problem solver who uses the tool at his disposal to achieve 
achieve the work he has to do. So I use various tools and I have some couple of certification, but without wasting much of our time, let's go for my introduction into what we have to do today. So first of all, uh, the major buzzword we've been hearing so far in from the year 2022 upward is AI, 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 and AI itself. I'm not yet to tell us about AI. I'll sound like a broken record talking about AI, but, but AI itself, it's really, really powerful. And when the whole buzzword of AI came about, I was asking myself, what makes AI itself special? Is it the programmer skills or is it the, what makes it special? And due to some bit of research I did, I discovered that the major, um, the major reason behind AI's performance is largely deals with, I'm talking of the large language model, which is what we with terms as AI today, largely deal with the amount of data AI has been trained with. So that gives me to this my demo. So while I was preparing to take a Microsoft certification, the Microsoft Fabric certification, so I had questions which I had and I had to be consulting one AI or the other to provide me with the answer. Now, the thing about large language models is because they may trained with a large pool of data. They may trained with a large pool of data. You have to do, you have to filter the data using stuff which we call prompt engineering to get the result you want, which takes a lot of argument, annoying time to get the result you want. So, so what I was thinking was, Okay, instead of doing this approach of going through this route, can't I just upload the data I want and let the language model to help me provide answers to it and sort of create my own AI too? Now, it's important to note, yes, as at this point in time, probably other platform also offers this, but I'm a, should I say, local developer as well, and I love to experiment and try things out. And I also love the fact that I will be able to do more customization using Copilot Studio. So without wasting much time, so let's get into the bot which we have today. Uh, okay. So first of all, I, I don't like to assume, I don't like to assume. Uh, so yes, Copilot Studio, if you go on your browser, Copilot Studio, I don't want to believe maybe everybody on this call knows what Copilot Studio is. If you don't know, Copilot Studio is a part of the Power Platform stack that allows you to create interactive um, copilots or what people with them to call your um, your chatbots, your assistant, your copilot assistant, your robotic assistant. So Copilot Studio is the tool that can help you create those type of applications and processes. So for you, if you're just getting, if you're just new to Copilot Studio, you can just click on try a demo, try for free. If you have a Microsoft Work or School account, that would get you to be able to sign up for Copilot Studio. Uh, okay, so the anointing bug. Just one moment, okay. Uh, just trying to get rid of that annoying bug. Okay, yeah, so back to this, back to my screen. Now, so on Copilot Studio, once I click on sign in, I get navigated to the to the experience which, which we have here for, for Copilot Studio, which is currently loading. Okay, Copilot Studio, so, on the experience, like I said, they are, they are, there's a nice place for you to start and get started in building out your, your own co-pilot. And what I normally recommend for people who say, well, they don't know how to go ahead to build things. It's always good to like check through the templates to see if there's one, um, one relating to your particular problem or your solution at that moment in time. At that moment in time. So here is the chatbot I created, the chatbot I created. But the purpose of this demo, I'll also be sh I'll also show how you can go ahead to create it yourself. It's a very simple process. Leads it needs little to no customization for you to adopt for yourself. 
Now, so this is the chatbot I created. I called it Learn Fabric with Joseph. And in the chatbots, I have a test chatbot. Now, what this chatbot does is I can ask it any question which I have in regards to fabric. Now, what I did, which is which I feel is kind of different from from what um, was normally in other other common um, large language model is under the knowledge section, I specify the um, the documents which I need because I'm someone who likes scanning through Microsoft documentation. So I just specify the documents which were which I was interested in learning. And I uploaded them as knowledge in my Copilot um, Studio experience. Now, once I've uploaded them as knowledge in my Copilot Studio experience, this also this also helps fill, limits my data to just those knowledge in that experience. Now I can ask it to, let's say, for instance, tell me, tell me about Microsoft Fabric. Now, the moment I ask it this, it's, it will supply me the answer uh, based on based on what is in the documentation, not what is outside from the documentation. And if you see this last bit of it, it's asking, can you provide your name to help track your request? Now, the reason why I included this part was because I also had the question that, okay, once I, once I probably ask it question, I also want to have like, history like version history like history of the conversation which i have which is what is currently available in your normal your all your normal large language model so what i did was this information which i asked the copilot i store it in a spreadsheet i store it in a spreadsheet using a power to me flow to help me store that information so right now if i provide it my name and my email address also, I, this I can use any email address, but just for the purpose, purpose of this demo. So the moment I do this, it stores the information in those in the spreadsheet, and I can go ahead to keep on asking more questions of on fabric, and it to keep on stop storing the information in the spreadsheet. So what it's data flow. What is data flow? So once I add this, it provides me an answer and I can open the spreadsheet for us to see. So this is the most recent question which I asked. So this is the spreadsheet. So Joseph Fadero, Joseph Fadero and Alice data flow, and this is the solution that the my chatbot provided. So I have a way to store the question that was asked and the solution which was provided. So how did I go about doing this? And it also sent me, but that's also something entirely, di entirely different. But how did I go about doing this? I built a flow, which is like an action in the Copilot bot, which collects information from Copilot Studio itself which are just simple variables that are already in Copilot Studio, the name, the email, the questions, the solution. And I add the row to a table, a table with Power Automate. Uh, I'm adding it to an Excel table and I'm doing a send an email action. It's a very, very simple flow and simple process for anybody, um, anybody to replicate as well. Now, so how can you get started to build this flow, which I'm sure is, is highly what people are interested in on this call. So how you can get started to build this out is under the Copilot Studio experience, you can just come to the create. You can start with create a new Copilot. A new Copilot. Under the new Copilot, you give the Copilot a name, whatever you want to call it, maybe whatever you want to learn. Let's say, um, learn to, want to learn about AI assistance. <laughs> Uh, or ant assistant. So, so yeah, so you can give it a name and you can give it the instructions. 
that direct the behavior of your copilot, including its tasks and how it completed them. You can give it instructions. If you don't even want to give it an instruction, you can just go ahead to add knowledge, add knowledge to the copilot. So adding knowledge, under the add knowledge, you have various options for you to add knowledge. You can add a public available website to the copilot studio. You can upload a file. You can upload a file as well to the copilot studio experience. So those are some of the things you can do. You can do for your copilot studio experience. Experience. I can once I do that, I can now click on create, create essentially, and with that you've created your bot. Now, even if you created your bot like I did, and you've not added any, you did you did not add any knowledge. Sorry you can still go ahead to add knowledge to the bot and you can go ahead to add actions which allows you to perform various automations based on the results of the bot. Now, so for Copilot Studio experience, it's important to note that how conversation go on in Copilot Studio, like this question that I yeah, ask that is providing me and the question which I'm asking it, how they are stored. They are stored in things called topics. So under your topics, you can find various conversation, various triggers, and you can modify pre-existing trigger. You can add a trigger based on your, your required request. You can add, these are custom triggers. You can add, you can go to the system triggers, which were the ones pre-built in copilot which are which have like a little bit of customization you can do so but without wasting much of time that is what i have for us today a simple I, well sort of simple flow i would be linking leaving the link to the documentation on probably how to do this with with the team and feel free to connect with me if you have any questions related to power automate and copilot studio as well this is awesome, Joseph. So very, very, very cool. Thank you for sharing the journey, the story, and and uh, you know, not making assumptions that everybody knows what everything is. I loved how you said that at the beginning. I'm not going to assume that you already know what this or that is. So thank you for sharing that. Great, great job. Uh, I I think this is Joseph's first time on the call, everybody. So a large round of applause for you. So thank you, Joseph. Great job for walking us through that. All right. Well, we might end up going a couple minutes over. We want to make sure Thomas has plenty of time, everybody. So we'll get that full demo in, and he's going to be here to talk about integration with Graph and SharePoint API using application permissions in Logic Apps. So lots of moving pieces. Can't wait to see it. Tommy, just take on over. All right. I see your screen, but I don't hear you. You're muted. It's muted. Of course. There you yeah, go. Sorry. <laughs> sorry once again. So um, the topic I'm going to talk about is something that I've been well facing multiple times. Like every time I'm about to start a new project. I mean, I was about to start a new project in Logic Apps, uh, where I had to query Graph API or SharePoint API, and I had to use application permissions instead of delegated ones. I was actually trying the same um, issues over and over again. So how to do it? And then either I was copying from the previous uh, solution or I was Googling the same solutions again and again. So instead, I decided to just write my own blog post and learn it by heart, finally. So anyways, uh, my name is Thomas Porzdek. I'm coming from Warsaw in Poland. I'm Business Applications MVP. I'm speaker, I'm presenter, I'm organizer of conferences and meetups as well, like one we are starting in about 10 minutes. <laughs> So, um, and uh, if you'd like to connect with me, it's just like one URL to, to find me. It's aka.ms slash postotech, and there are hyperlinks to other social media channels, to Twitter, I mean, X, YouTube, uh, my blog, and so on. So then feel free to uh, navigate over there. Uh, and, uh, yep. Yeah. And the topics I am going to talk about today, um, you can find more details about uh, the steps I'll be showcasing. I mean, very deep details about the steps I'll be showcasing uh, in my two latest blog posts. So uh, with that, uh, well, I'll just jump over to, to demos. So the idea here is that um, I need to build uh, well, pretty easy logic apps. Um, and they have to work using application permissions to query both Graph and SharePoint APIs. So first, uh, let's go and try with the Graph API. 
Um, to start with, you need to register your application. I have it already registered, so I'll just skip this step. But the registration of an application is pretty easy. The next step you have to do is you need to grant the application the permissions you want the application to have. Well, in my case, I'll be using the mail read basic so that the application is able now to um, access any user mailbox in, the, in my tenant and read through, it, through their mails. Uh, you can grant other permissions. It has to be, of course, application permissions by um, pressing the button at the permission. And then you can choose from whatever hundreds of endpoints um, that you can uh, well choose from. The point is, once you do grant a uh, new permission, um, and it's on the app level, it will most certainly require the admin consent. Rap row. Did you just lose Thomas? So, oh, are you back, Thomas? Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I'm suddenly okay. back. Am awesome. I? All right. We, yeah, you're back. We can hear you now. Yep. Okay, so then just be sure you, you press that grant admin consent or ask an admin to do that for you. Now, the second thing you need to do is to navigate to certificates and secrets because to access Graph API, you need to have a valid um, secret. So then once you create a new secret, you need to grant it a name. You need to as well define how long should it uh, work and then copy the value. So this value you will need for later because we want to use Key Vault to store every confidential information, not to put it plain text in your flows uh, or anywhere else that anyone can actually access them. So copy that. And the second thing you need to copy and remember is the client ID. So the client ID uh, together with directory tenant ID. So these two other information you need to learn and copy because later we'll use them to set up um, an authentication. Now the next step, you have to set up a key vault. Now, the key vault must be in the same region as the region where you are going to build your logic app. In my case, it's the West Europe. And in key vault, the very important thing for both um, accessing SharePoint API and uh, Graph API, I mean, it doesn't matter what API you're accessing. Um, it's matter uh, in terms of what, um, of how you want other applications to allow them to access the key vault. So what I recommend you is first after you create a key vault, navigate to access configuration and switch from the vault access policy into Airbag, so the Azure role based access control. Uh, it's not only that Microsoft recommends it, but I do that as well. Uh, it's just much, much safer and much more flexible. And then once you switch that access permission or the access model, create the secrets. So in my case, I have two secrets. I have a graph client ID and graph client secret uh, about the SharePoint client ID. I'll get to that later in a second. So I have them too. And last thing, well, you need to build your logic app. So in my case, I do have already a blank canvas of a logic app. What I'm missing is I'm missing the integration with Key Vault and the ability for the uh, logic app to actually query the Key Vault and obtain the secrets. So to do that, you need to navigate to um, identity in your logic app and then because we want as well the uh, access to keyboard to be done on behalf of the application account, not on behalf of a user. Therefore, we need to uh, assign it an identity. So turn on um, and save the system assigned identities. <clears throat> and then once this is turned on, you'll be able to uh, assign the Azure uh, identity. So then add role assignment, then select the Azure key vault. You have to select as well the subscription where you have your key vault provisioned, of course. So in my case, this is the going to be the key del, um, KDW. And then speaking about the roles, uh, this is what the RBAC built in roles. In our case, what we want, because right now um, the logic app is well, has to be able to query uh, secrets. So we need to grant it a role that is called the key vault city, sorry, um, key vault secrets user. And this role is going to allow uh, the logic app to query data, query secrets from the key vault, but not to manipulate them. All right, so then the role is being assigned. And once it is assigned, I'll be able to go back to uh, the designer and simply add here an action that is going to allow the process to get these secrets. Uh, Azure key vault. So let's get secret. Let's call it 
client ID. Now you can see here I have already a list of all the secrets and as well a certificate, but let's not um, go too far yet. Uh, and then copy and paste. So then the secrets number two is going to be uh, the client secret or the app secret. Now, one important thing about the, the, the actions which are querying um, the Azure Key Vault is that you may want to set these two features here to secure input and output so that even if someone has an access to Logic App and is able to see the, um, the runs history, even if they go into the run history, they will not be able to see what was returned from the key vault, so then your secrets are not exposed. Once this feature is turned on, you'll see this small lock as an icon on the action. So that is a pretty cool thing. Uh, and also every action that uses this data is inheriting this security setting so that I don't really need to set it everywhere else. All right, and just I'll replace these two places, these two values here. First, the client ID, I need to put in value, then the client secret, and again, the value, uh, the value. Um, and then, well, that's that's done. So I'll just save it and let's see how it works. Right now, the process should simply be able to uh, get me my emails. Oops, there is, oh, sorry, uh, right. So there is this access token authorized error. Um, and that is, that is because, oh, that's a good question why it was, why, why it didn't work. Uh, Graph API and Graph, uh, maybe I just chose, sorry, maybe I just chose the wrong, Yep, I haven't switched here to, the, to take a secret. Obviously, demo guts are not very nice today. But anyways, now it worked. So once I refresh the run, yep, the, and the action was able to actually access my mailbox and oh, just trust me, it was able to get all my emails from my mailbox. All right, so the Graph API is pretty simple. You need to get the client secret, client ID. Then you need to generate yourself the bearer token. And then with this bearer token, you're able then to uh, call any endpoints in Graph API. Now with the SharePoint API, it's a little bit more um, fun or a bit more complex because apart from having, again, the uh, App registered, you need to grant it a certificate. So the authentication to SharePoint API most, I mean, works the best using the certificate. So to do that, you need to navigate to Azure Key Vault and then hit to generate or create new certificate. You need to grant it a name. Um, oops, it doesn't. Okay, you need to grant a name then it should be a self-signed certificate unless you have one that you have acquired from somewhere. Then for the CN, so the common name is always the SharePoint.com because we want to grant, um, the, I mean, use the certificate to authorize all these calls coming, going to the SharePoint endpoint. And then you can configure additional settings like how long should the certificate be valid and so on and so on. Now, once the certificate is generated, I have one already here, then open it and go to the latest version. And from the latest version, you need to download the certificate in that SEER format. You're going to use it to authorize an application to call SharePoint API. And so once you got the SEER format, you need to navigate into the API permissions of the application that you have provisioned. Where do I have it? Here. But this time, sorry, um, to, to certificates and secrets. But this time, instead of generating new client secret, new client ID, I mean, new client secret, you need to switch to the certificate tab and under the certificate tab, hit the button Upload Certificate, and in here, upload that SEER file that you have downloaded from the Key Vault in the first place. So that is the second step that you have to do, uh, speaking about the SharePoint application. And then the third, well, actually, is to navigate to your Logic App and to set up the whole integration. Again, if you're building a new application, just be sure that you have went to, that you have gone to identity configuration, that you have switched on the Azure roles management for the application, for the Logic App, and that you have granted a specific um, role. In my, in our case, in this case, we need to grant this um, application, this Logic App, uh, actually, <clears throat> a second role, because this time it is not only going to be allowed to query secrets, 
but it as well has to be able to query um, certificates, right? So then I'll go to the Key Vault, and then there is a second role that is called Key Vault Certificates User, right? So that's a second role that will allow the application, which is called a logic gap, um, to access certificates as well. Lovely. So now once this is added, once this role is added, I can now, come on, show up. Oh, trust me, it should be here. It was added. All right, I hope it's gonna work. So now I'm able to switch back to the designer. I'll just copy this action in here. But this time I want to take the SharePoint client ID because that's a second application. And also I need to get the certificate. So I need to get the SharePoint.com certificate. Now, one thing important is that, as you may see, all these actions are using the connection well, with this name, but it's using the managed identity. So I have created a connection based or using uh, an application permissions. So just I, need, I went to add new, and here I switched from the client certificate out into the managed identity. Then I typed in the key vault name, and that simply created a connection for this logic app. Uh, okay, so here everything is set up. Now I need to as well configure an action that is going to call HTTP endpoint from SharePoint. It's going to be a pretty simple call, just get details of a web. So what I have to do is to provide a client ID for, for the application, which is here. And you need to select the credential type from secret to certificate and provide a certificate. If your certificate was protected with a password, type in a password or get it from the key vault as well. If not, like in this case, then you don't need to actually do anything else. So with that, I should be now able to just replace these two scopes and save and run so that the process is able to now get data from SharePoint Web. And refresh. And hey, there it is. So with that, I was able to get this beauty information from my SharePoint website. So all these details about the website is here. And well, that is pretty it. So again, if you would like to know in very details like what to do in every step to set up this kind of configuration, uh, it's on my blog. So feel free to, to learn and use it yourself. Thank you very much. Awesome stuff, Thomas. That was jam-packed full of valuable information. End to end, showed everyone how to take advantage of that. I, you know, you're so good with secrets. I think that an uh, international spy might be your next uh, <laughs> big break, right, in, in, the, in your career. <laughs> great, great job. All right, and thank you to all of our presenters today. Doug, Joseph, Thomas, great job. Great job. Thank you so much for sharing your passion with the community. Uh, we love it, and everyone else loved it as well. All right, let's close up shop today. Uh, if you would like to get uh, more collaborative opportunities with the community, we've got our Discord server. So please don't hesitate to take advantage of that. It's kind of like a nice one-stop shop location to get involved with all areas of our community. We've got now over 2,300 members actually, so we need to update those numbers. We're moving fast and it's absolutely free. And you can brag to your kids that you're in Discord, right? So who doesn't love that? Uh, we also would love to get some feedback from you on these calls, what's working, what's not. Uh, even if you filled it out and said you'd like them, let us know again because it helps management know that these are valuable and that we're going in the right direction. Uh, with that, the recording will be available in 24 hours or less on the Microsoft Community Learning YouTube channel. You can subscribe at aka.ms slash community slash YouTube if you see a link in the chat saying that the video is ready to download. It is not. You have to be in the tenant to be able to get that. So your best bet is to go to ak.ms slash community slash YouTube and subscribe. You will be alerted as soon as those videos drop. You can also follow us on X or the artist formerly known as Twitter uh, at M365PNP and of course our LinkedIn group for discussions ak.ms slash community slash LI.
Our next call is in November. Holy cow, it's almost November. Uh, November 7th, two weeks from today. And the next Viva Connections is going to be one week from today, October 31st, both of which are at 7 a.m. Pacific. So thank you all for attending. You can get the invites at ak.ms slash community slash calls. We love you for everything that you're doing in the community. Keep it up. Uh, go earn those badges. Make those contributions. Get involved. Join Sharing is Caring. We appreciate you each and every day. We wouldn't be where we are doing this without you. So keep on doing awesome stuff. Have a great rest of your week and a wonderful weekend. And we will see See you next time. Bye-bye.